Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting topics. The first one is a physique update of Regan Grimes, in which he looks really lean, right? So I'm not sure how recent this, this video is, but it's probably just good lighting. It makes him look more conditioned than he really is. And there is another thing that kind of proves that this is recent, and it's not a good thing. Take a look at his belly button. Is that umbilical hernia? Because it really looks like one. Yeah, that's what it is. Unfortunately, apparently, Regan Grimes has also developed a umbilical hernia. Now, for those of you who are thinking he always had it, no, no, he didn't. Here's a photo of Regan from this past Mr. Olympia. There was no umbilical hernia on site here. There was no sign of it. I mean, nobody would guess at the time that he was going to develop one. But maybe if you pay attention to all of his photos, you could see that something was starting to happen in the past year or so. Here is another photo from like a month ago, off-season photo, post-Olympia photo, uh, in his rebound, and it wasn't there, it still wasn't there at that point. Like, again, there was a little bit of something, and maybe, maybe you can notice it now that you know that he developed it, but at that time, it definitely wasn't visible, it wasn't an issue. And now it is. The bad thing about umbilical hernia is that it doesn't go away. It definitely never gets better, but what it's worse, it doesn't stagnate. It gets worse. It actually expands over time. Especially if you're forcing growth, if you're trying to get bigger by lifting very heavy weights and by eating a lot of food, especially in combination with certain things that Regan must be taking because he's definitely growing very fast, he did grow a lot after the Mr. Olympia and in the process, I believe, because of him pushing things that much, this happened. It's really small for now, it's not big, it wouldn't be an issue on stage if it stayed like this. But it won't stay like that. I'm sure you remember that Good Vito had the same issue recently. This is a photo from his last prep when he was prepping for Italy and Spain show that Regan actually did. And during this prep, it wasn't that bad, it was barely noticeable. It was the beginning stages of it and it wasn't really a big issue. However, later, only a couple of months later, only a couple of months later it progressed to this. And this wasn't good. This would definitely affect his placement at any show. It's basically the same thing like a gyno. When it's this bad, it's really distracting. It doesn't look aesthetic. It looks really bad. So he did a surgery. He got it fixed. And that's it. Did you guys even know that Chris Bumstead had a surgery, umbilical hernia surgery as well? You probably didn't. Because you never saw it. But he made a post about this when he had it done, and you can't see any scarring or anything like that. There are no issues now from it, but yes, a surgery had to be performed. And the reason why we never saw Chris Bumstead hernia, I think, is because he also developed it during the post-show rebound phase. Because that's the time when you're eating a lot, when your stomach is sucked in and you're expanding it constantly with a lot of food because you're hungry. And it happened to Regan now in his post-show rebound phase. And I think the same thing happened to Guduito because he's, he already had it during the prep, but after he stopped his prep, uh, he had a rebound, a really good rebound, and then it expanded really bad. So I believe the same thing happened to Chris. He developed it after a show and he had a surgery done immediately. So we never saw any of it, Regan is going to have to do it at some point, I don't know when, better sooner than later. He's going to have to be out of a gym for a couple of weeks, but the scarring is not going to be an issue, so, so overall it's not a big deal. Yes, he's going to have to do a surgery, but it's not going to impact his career or anything like that. He's going to have to be out of a gym for a couple of weeks and that's about it. Alright, the next story I don't want to talk too much about because I already spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. We already knew that Rubio Mosquera, aka Nexila, is out of Arnold Classic Ohio, but now it's official. He made a post saying that he did not solve the visa issue and he won't be able to enter the USA and compete at the Arnold Classic in Ohio. Now, this is a big disappointment, I gotta say. This is probably more disappointing than... I don't know if Hadi decided not to compete or Samson, if you ask me, because I don't know, man. Exila, he's like the biggest breakthrough star from 2023, if you ask me. And definitely the freakiest bodybuilder of today. So I thought maybe this Arnold Classic Ohio, he could have surprised us all and, you know, brought something insane and, like, I don't know, maybe even win the show. I mean, it's unlikely, but 
something crazy could have happened. Maybe it will at the Arnold Classic UK, but, you know, UK is not the same as Ohio. Ohio is the Arnold Classic, you know, UK is Arnold Classic UK. It's a different show, but, you know, the lineup is similar, not the same, but still, I mean, it's gonna be awesome to see him over there, however, not at the Ohio, unfortunately. Like I said, it would be, it would be less disappointing if Hari Japan was out of Arnold Classic Ohio or Samson Dauda. I mean, at this point, I'm maybe even more excited about Arnold Classic UK because of Nexilla. I mean, not really. Again, Arnold is the Arnold. So, I mean, this situation really sucks. It sucks every time something like this happens. I don't know how can they solve this issue, but it's really bad when top bodybuilders can't compete against the very best because of these kind of issues. But yeah, like I said, we already knew. And also, like, we saw Nixilla's physique update a couple of weeks ago, actually, like, a week ago. And, you know, he didn't look like he was getting ready for Ohio. Like, I think he knew ahead of time that he wasn't gonna be there because his conditioning is definitely behind. It's not really... I mean, it could be good in five weeks, but he looked like he was a little bit behind, like he would have to rush things, so it wouldn't be ideal for him to compete at the Ohio. And Chris Cormier actually spoke about this, uh, how Nexilla had a lot of time with his family, a lot of free time. He wasn't really focused on bodybuilding that much. So more time would be a good thing, and maybe he figures out this thing with Visa, and, you know, he enters the US and he does the New York Pro against Nick Walker, I mean, win or lose, that would be a show of the year, two biggest freaks against each other, man, I'm getting chills just thinking about that, that would be really awesome, there is no talk, there are no rumors about Nexilla doing the New York Pro, it's just something I wish it would happen, and who knows, maybe it does, what do you guys think about that idea? Alright, now let's talk about Arnold Classic, and we got a physique update of Rafael Brandau at 4 weeks out of Arnold Classic, it's actually 4 weeks out guys, it's gonna happen so soon, and like I said, we have this physique update of Rafael Brandau, and yeah, he's definitely getting more conditioned, he's definitely getting harder, I mean look at the chest separation, and this is definitely the guy that is like probably right outside of the top 3, it's probably gonna be him, I mean, look at him right here, he definitely did grow some muscle in the past offseason, he's definitely bigger, not at the cost of his waistline, his waist still looks tight, his abs look good, but he does look bigger. Unfortunately, in this physique update, we don't get to see his back, and his back, like, it was always kind of wide, you know, it was really well shaped, but it wasn't the thickest back ever. The symmetry of it, the shape of it, the completeness of it, it was all beautiful. It all flew so well, but it wasn't massive enough. And now that he added more tissue, I hope the majority of that muscle is in the back, because that's probably where he needed the most improvements. And I'm sure he did add some tissue to the back. We can't see it for some reason, maybe he's hiding it because that's where he progressed the most, and he wants to surprise us with his back, or maybe he's hiding it because he's not really happy with the progression he made. But I'm pretty sure he was focused on improving that back because it definitely needed improving. I mean, that's where he lacks the thickness. And it also shows in the side poses because his side chest and side tricep aren't really the poses in which he looks the biggest. I mean, because he's not the biggest guy. And in those poses, you can see it. In the front poses, he can make the illusion of looking bigger because of his great shape, but it's really hard, almost impossible to hide the thickness in the side poses. You either have it or you don't. But I mean, at this point, he definitely grew a lot of muscle. He's not gonna be as big as Hardy and Samson, but he's gonna be just big enough to beat some of the other guys who are bigger than him, but don't have this perfect shape, basically. Can't he beat his fellow Brazilian, though? I mean, Marcelo D'Angelis right now looks really freaking good. Like, he's definitely getting harder as we speak. He's getting more conditioned. And I don't know if he added any muscle from that Romania pro. He probably didn't. But even in that show, he looked really good. The thing he has on Rafael Brando are definitely legs. Like, Rafael Brando doesn't have this thick and round legs. Brando's legs are more streamlined, but this guy's legs, they're literally bubbly, like they're really big. 
they're popping everywhere hamstrings quads i mean they're just round and, and massive and horse md has a really poor back double bicep but his back lat spread is really good check it out even though rafael has a really wide back in the back lat spread i don't think he's this wide i don't think he looks this good in the back lat spread but as far as the back double, I think Rafael is better, but, you know, not by much. I think Horse MD is actually very close to Rafael Brandao at this point. I would say Rafael is probably more complete, maybe more matured, and he has more experience, and he has a bigger name. But Horse has a lot of roundness, especially in the quads and then hamstrings, I would say bicep peaks as well. So he's kind of more on a freaky side, but Rafael is more streamlined. I mean, we don't know until we see these guys both on stage. Maybe Rafael is just much bigger, but I don't think he's that much bigger. Anyways, that's Arnold Classic. I believe they're looking more for that aesthetic look, and Rafael has it probably more than Horse MD. I think both of these guys are going to do great. I think both of them are going to be top 5. Uh, James Hollingshead is also in my top 5, but probably like behind these guys, you know, 5th, maybe he can challenge one of them, maybe both of them, I don't know, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see, we have 4 more weeks to wait and see what's gonna happen, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you wanna see more content like this, guys, please subscribe to my channel, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best guys, and bye bye.